Hey Math 31, let's get going on example 7. We're going to take a look at the Intermediate Value Theorem for polynomials, or you might hear me refer to this as IVT. I usually lazy it up and just use that acronym. So let's get into it. It says if f of x is a polynomial function with only real coefficients, and if for real numbers a and b, the values of f and a, f of a, excuse me, and f of b are opposite in sign, then there exists at least one real zero between a and b. And I know that sounds like a lot to take in, but let's, let's try and break this down. So f of x, it's going to be some kind of polynomial. And we've been talking about polynomials in this chapter. And if you remember a polynomial, it has this basic form, right? ax to the n plus another power of x to the n minus 1, all the way down to the linear term, all the way down to the constant. All right, so what we're saying is all of these coefficients, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub 1, a sub 0, they're all real numbers, so I've got no imaginaries. That's what that's referring to. And then for two numbers, a and b, whatever you want them to, whatever they happen to be, for x equaling a and x equaling b, if we find their function values and they are opposite in sign, and when I say opposite in sign, this means one function value is positive and one function value is negative. So we've got f of a, maybe f of a is positive and f of b is negative, or, or vice versa. But what that means is there exists at least one real zero, one x-intercept between a and b. All right, and I want you to just take a moment. I'm going to sketch this over here. I think it'll help if we have a visual. And we'll play it out with this function, but here's the visual of what's happening. So let's say I have some kind of polynomial here, just like that. I'm going to graph it, okay? And I'll call this a and I'll call this B. And it doesn't matter if you call one A versus B, but I'm just gonna go A, B, low to high here. So here's F of A, right? And then here is F of B. And I think you'll give me F of B is positive, right? It's above the x-axis, and F of A is negative. It's below the x-axis. So I went from, or I started on the x-axis with two real numbers, A and B, and their function values are opposite in sign, right? So f of a and f of b are opposite in sign. Then there exists at least one real zero between a and b, meaning there has to be an x-intercept somewhere between a and b, and you can see it right here. There's the x-intercept. Because basically we're saying if there's a point below the x-axis and one above the x-axis, between these two x-values, you have to pass through the x-axis, right? You've got to have an x-intercept. And that's what the intermediate value theorem is saying, that between this negative number and this positive number, there was the number zero. It was intermediate between these two y values. And so I had to pass through the x-axis, meaning I had to have a real zero or an x-intercept. All right, so with that, let's take a look at this. It says, show that the function negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 5 has at least one real zero between x equaling 1 and x equaling negative 2. All right, so first of all, I've got a polynomial, all right? All of my coefficients are real numbers because this coefficient is negative one, positive two, negative four, positive five. All right, so I have a polynomial function with only real coefficients. And then I was given two real numbers, a and b. I was given one and two. And since I was given one and two, let's figure out what f of one and f of two are equal to. So let me find f of one and let's find f of two. Now, again, I'm lazy. I want to use the store function on my calculator, and I could absolutely crunch these numbers by hand. You're more than welcome to do negative 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 5. And then you could repeat that for, for 2, negative 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. But like I said, I, I want to be as efficient as I can, and that's going to involve using that store function. So let me go back to my home screen, clear all of that out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store one into x, and then I'm gonna crunch my polynomial, negative x cubed plus two x squared minus four x plus five. It looks like that y value was two, or that function value is two. All right, so I have the ordered pair one comma two here. 
And then let me repeat this process for two. Now let me store two into X and run that calculation again. It looks like I would have come back out with a Y value of negative three. All right, if I wanted to think about this as an ordered pair, that's the ordered pair two, negative three. But what I want you to take note of is that these Y values are opposite in sign, right? F of one and F of two are opposite in sign. And what that's telling us is that if we were above the x-axis here and then we went below the x-axis here, I must have passed through the x-axis. And again, passing through the x-axis, having an x-intercept, means that you had a y value of zero. So let me adjust this graph and we'll see what's going on here. All right, so I had a negative cubic since it's a negative cubic, I mean, we know the general shape looks something like that, but let's see, we had one, two, and then I had two, negative three, right? So this function has to pass through the x-axis between x equaling one and x equaling two. There has to be a real zero there, all right? So if we look at this, it, between these two y values, right, we trapped f of x equaling zero. That's what it means to be an intermediate value. It's intermediate between two and negative three. Zero has to be between here. So I must have had an x-intercept and that's how you can apply the intermediate value theorem. So I can say, therefore, there's at least one zero. There might even be more, but there is at least one zero, one real zero specifically, zero between x equaling one and x equaling two. All right, that's what the intermediate value theorem is telling us. And let's just check it on our calculators. All right, it doesn't hurt to check. So let me go to my y equals, clear out whatever business I have there. Let me type in my function, negative x cubed plus two x squared minus four x plus five. All right, let me hit zoom six. And you can actually see it, all right? You can see that I had f of one, if I show you f of one, right? If I plug in one, I'm up here at three, excuse me, I'm up here at two. If I plug in two, oops, let me plug in two again. All right, there we go. I'm down here at negative three. So I went from positive two to negative three. I must have passed through the x-axis. If you wanted to actually calculate that zero, you can do second trace and option two you know you have a left bound of one, a right bound of two, and our actual re real zero was at 1.526 comma zero. All right, and that was the last question. I kind of tacked it on at the end here. All right, so you see me saying, hey, what? use your calculator to calculate your real zero. And again, a zero, it's another word for an x-intercept. But if it's an x-intercept, you owe me an ordered pair, so that was 1.526 comma zero. Okay? All right, so with that, we're going to flip to the next page, and we're actually going to take a look at polynomial regression. So we're going to be back with statistics, and we've done a little bit with linear regression, a little bit with quadratic regression. So we're going to move to other powers. We're going to look at cubics and cortex. All right, I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye.